I'm moving into the Zaley camp. <laughs> if a Holy Spirit was a fast food restaurant, he would be Chick-fil-A. What can I do for you today? My pleasure. My pleasure. My, that is the Holy Spirit. My pleasure. <laughs> That's amazing. It's so true. Hi guys. Good morning. Oh, afternoon. Evening? Good afternoon. <laughs> Evening. Can you come closer to me? Oh yeah, always. Because of that guy up there. Yeah. Hi. Because of the YouTube guy. Hi. Hi. I'm sorry, again. Time of day. Whatever time of day, good afternoon, good evening, good night. That was from Truman Show. I was gonna say, that's, that's on something. Does that's from like Truman something. Show? Welcome Let's to- Let's put this in front of us. How hashtag. Mm -hmm. We're gonna move the mic and tell us if you can hear me slash us yes. better. Give us some feedback. We love feedback. Feedback's the best. <laughs> feedback is making our lives right now. Um, well, that was ingenious. We're so happy to be here. Welcome to day two of hashtag BISVBS. That is Blessed Is She Virtual Bible Study. We are, as a community, reading the book of Acts. And today we are talking about chapter two. 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 Talking about chapter two. Uh, Oops, we forgot to go on here. Oh, darn. We would love to hear your one thing, your takeaway from chapter two. In fact, every day we just want to hear your takeaway. And Jenna and I are here to share our one takeaway. We sometimes, sure are. Sometimes we have more than one. Yeah, you guys can have more than one. Definitely. I'm going to read all of yours today. I'm very excited about Oh, let's about do it. it. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Let's get started. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, Father, we thank you so much um, for bringing us all together. We thank you, Lord, for the internet and for the ability to pray together and be in your presence together. We ask that you just come upon us right now, Lord, with your peace. We ask that you give us great rest. Holy Spirit, would you stir up in us, reveal something new to us, speak to us specifically to our lives and our situations. Thank you, Father, for how you're moving and how you will move. We say this all in your most holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I was just leaning over so I'd get closer to the mic. Mm -hmm. Sorry. How is the Sorry volume? if that looks like a hunchback of Notre Dame. Dom. Dame? <laughs> Dom? I think you look great. You have a lot today. I know. There's a lot happening. It's a in big chapter. chapter. Two. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Beth, do you want to do yours? I always have to go first. Always, Beth? Yesterday. Let's and count today. back how many times Beth went first. I'm gonna for go through Mark. Mark no, and it was watch me a lot of times. Okay, all right. You guys well, wanna do over under? Is that a sport thing? Yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Good volume. Praise the Lord. Thank you, so Emma. So glad. Okay. Thank thanks, you Emma. for that great positive feedback. <laughs> I couldn't be more grateful. Thank you, Thank Emma. Thank you, Emma. You guys, the shadows on my glasses drive me insane. It's okay. You look great. I wish I could take them off, but they frame my face, so then I just look like I'm sleeping. Do I look like I'm sleeping? No. You look Hi amazing. from Dallas. Hi. My takeaway was all of Peter's address. Yeah. How do I access you on my laptop? I don't think you can, but when we get it on YouTube, we'll be there. Yes. Okay, I'm just going to start reading other people's. Okay. K, okay. verse 17, has given each of us a portion of his spirit. Love how he blesses us uniquely and individually. That's cool. Beth, okay, I'm did ready. you find yours? Yeah, well, yeah, I'm ready. Go ahead. I had a lot of takeaways, but to no one's You're surprise. You're so sweet, Stacy. Thank you. I'm going to put them back on because it just say. doesn't help my dizziness when I don't have my glasses on. Yeah, Jenna's just dizzy a little today. Blurry. Please pray for her. Okay. Stacy said I should rock my glasses. You look amazing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um... To no one's surprise, my takeaway today is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, he's chock full in here. I he's get all, it. He's all over Acts, and I am here for it. Yeah. So my verse is uh, 2 4. Okay. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. That's the part. If you couldn't tell from the cadence, 
That's my That's takeaway. my favorite part. As the spirit gave them ability. I just am learning practically in my everyday life. I can literally do nothing. I can't do anything yeah. on my own. It's the Holy Spirit who gives me the ability. It's a totally different way of life. Like that's not a like nice churchy religious thing to say. Like I'm actually learning how limited and dependent I am. Yeah. And so this really resonates with me and reminds me that if I, I have to go to the Holy Spirit for my ability. Like if I want to think differently, if I want to solve problems more efficiently, if, if I need comfort, whatever I need, the Holy Spirit is the one who gives me the ability. And so I'm just, I'm learning, I'm practicing, and I talked about this on our team retreat. I am practicing throughout the day, just asking the Holy Spirit, help, help me, Holy Spirit. Like that simple. Um, because I really, I'm like, I'm not getting very far on my own ability. I'm, I'm burning out on my own ability. So I just really need the Holy Spirit. We're gonna make a new prayer poster. It's just gonna say, Holy Spirit, help. Seriously, I would, I would buy that. <laughs> I am praying that all yeah. the time. And it sounds really desperate and like little, but I, I love to think about like Gabby all the time. It's like, help, help, yeah. help. Like totally. it's, it's such a childlike prayer. Um, and he wants to help. Yeah. He's showing me that in prayer that he's like ready to help all the time. Like the, the image I have is like the Holy Spirit is like poised. He's on his toes. Like, can I, can I help you with that? Can I get that for you? All we have to do is call upon him. So I just love that as the spirit gave them ability. Okay. So yesterday, Brick House in the City, Lauren Winter shared this post on Facebook. Yes. Did you see it? Yes. Did you remember it? Yeah. Okay. So it was a picture of the stairs from St. Therese's childhood home. Yes. And how there's a story. Is it Zaley? Is it Zelly? We'll take a poll. Someone did take a poll yesterday. Oh, Gina, maybe? I did. Anyway. Um, I don't know. I have one friend who calls her daughter Zelly, one friend who calls her daughter Zaylee. What sweethearts. I know. That's I don't so know. Cute. So <laughs> Saint fill in the blank, Zelly Zaylee, uh, told this story about how when Saint Therese was a little girl, every time she would go up or down the steps, she would only descend or ascend one step until she called out for her mama to look. Was it to look? Yeah, it was just like mama. Yeah. I didn't know what St. Zelly answered. And that she would have to answer something about. like really lovely. Like, I see you. I yeah. hear you. Something like that. Every single step. Or like, step. I'm here. Yep. Every single step. Someone on here is going to know what we're talking yeah. about. Do you know? Give us some parts if you know what we're talking about. verbiage. We could also look it up. But it's, it's, su it's such a, um, it's such a, a picture of our utter lack of, of ability totally. and childlike dependence, which is a gospel value. Like that's a kingdom value. That's not to our shame. Right. That's our honor is that we're children and we have a loving, attentive God who's watching, who's listening, who sends us physical help. Yeah. The spirit. Every step. Every single step. Papa, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> I've already been crying all morning. That is the sweetest. I'm going to cry. Isn't that cute? Papa? Papa? <laughs> anyway, Jenna, what was your takeaway? I'm going to cry now. Yeah. Jeez. Maybe I should read some takeaways. <laughs> yes, my child. That's what she would say. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Yes, my child. What did Therese say? She like, just say like mama. mama. Yeah, I she think just she said, said something else. Every step. Give me a break. What did she say, guys? Every step. Yes, my child. Um, <sighs> I'm just happy that Peter said that they weren't drunk at 9 a.m. <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, Sober intoxication of the spirit. Zaley. According to? The E in French makes an A sound. Okay, okay. According to French people. I'm, it's happening. I'm, I'm moving into that camp. I'm moving into the Zaley camp. <laughs> If a Holy Spirit was a fast food restaurant, he would be Chick-fil-A. What can I do for you today? My pleasure. My pleasure. My, that is the Holy Spirit. My pleasure. <laughs> That's amazing. That's so true, actually. This person said it's Zeely. That's how it's pronounced in France. 
guys? This is confusing. This is what I'm talking about. How okay. are we supposed to know? Okay, let me tell you mine. Okay, please. It was verse mm. two. Yeah. And suddenly Ooh. a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Okay, it goes into verse three. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributed and resting on each one of them. Okay, this verse, this translation is different than my book. Um, mm. But what I like about it is that it says a violent wind. Yes. This one says a mighty wind, yes. right? So it's like chaos. I would imagine it's like chaotic. And then this tongue as a fire rests on them. And that's the part that I thought was so cool. That like... Even in our chaos or what feels like chaos, the Holy Spirit always feels like rest. It always feels like peace. Mm -hmm. Like the Holy Spirit does not create chaos within us. He literally rests on us. Like, I, I don't know. I just thought it was so cool. It's that's, that's always what the Holy Spirit is. It's always mm -hmm. peace. It's always rest. Um, so that was mine. Because I was amazing. like, this violent wind is kind of crazy. Yeah. But he just came and rested on them. Yeah. Like, he gave them the peace, I would imagine. Yes. You know? That was mine. That was beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Let's read some of yours. Let's see what else. 42 through 47, the communal life really spoke to me. Mm -hmm. Finding your community to pray, break bread with, and support one another. This has been on my heart so much as of late. Tell us more. Yeah. Are you able to do that? Do you know what I do you know what I really liked about that that section was and this was potentially going to be my takeaway was uh, verse 46 day by day as they spent much time together. Yeah, lots of time together. They have you <laughs> have to be together. You have to be with people who think and talk like you, who want the same things you want. You, so they're all out there among the masses spreading the good news, but they're anchored they're rooted in their community and they're spending much time together in the word eating uh lending each other things who knows yeah what does it say sharing all their stuff sharing all their Real stuff possessions. yeah it's so much more than just saying he's your lord it's devoting yourself to his teachings communal life breaking bread and prayer yeah i love that word devoted they devoted totally themselves. totally like it was their whole this is it for them yeah Oh, mine was everyone speaking in our own tongues and everyone understood. It's like all of us women and blessed is she. We come from all over the world yet hear and understand each other. <sighs> you guys, you can't say things like that when we're so emotional, emotional. today. <laughs> it's so cool. It's really beautiful. Thank you. The Lord is so unifying, mm -hmm. you know, like no matter any other differences, our vocational calls are yeah. what we're doing in our lives currently. He is so unifying and it's so incredible. Geographical location. Yeah. Socioeconomic Crazy. status. Yeah. I meant to say that actually in Teachable yeah. Tuesday this week. This, I don't even know where it is now, but when Paul says like there is neither Jew nor Greek. Right. Slave nor free. Male nor female. Like Christ is all in all. Yeah. It's so good. Um, the Spirit made them speak in tongues so everyone could understand them. The Spirit speaks to all of our hearts in the way we need. Wow. In the way we can understand. In the words we each need to hear. That's good. Yeah. So good. Can we talk for a second about Tell us. verse 41? So those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 were added to their number. Hmm. 3,000? That's how compelling the gospel message is. It's crazy. That's how compelling, that's how effective the Holy Spirit is. Like Peter was not doing that from like all of those years training in uh, like Pharisee school. He wasn't a teacher of the law. He wasn't uh, just fishing. He was just a fisherman, but the Holy Spirit gave him the ability to put, uh, he gave him all of those scriptures to make the most compelling argument it does say argument, actually, to make the most compelling invitation to people to come into new life in Christ. Like how they acted, how they talked was so compelling. People on the spot. I, that was another one. Brothers, what should we do? Like, what do we do? That, that's amazing. What you have is amazing. What do I need to do? Yeah. Repent and be baptized. 
Father Park says that all the time. Yeah. There are like two responses to the gospel. Uh, repent and be baptized. Repent and go to confession. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Was that my third takeaway? <laughs> um, let's see. I wasn't, I was listening. I was being an active listener. Oh, thanks, friend. Um, I feel like he outlined right there how to be saved in verses 42 through 47. Mm. So many Christian denominations think all you have to do is say you accept Jesus as your savior, but here outlines four things. Was that what you just read? 42, did you say? Through 47. Devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and oh. fellowship to the breaking of the bread and prayers. Um, they shared all things in common. They sold their possessions and goods, distributed the proceeds to all who had need. Spent much time together in the temple, broke bread at home, ate their food. I mean, it's just a, um, it's like an outline for life, you know? Yeah. This is what the life of a disciple is like. What's the word I'm looking for? Not an outline. Well, I thought this was interesting too. Verse 47, uh, this is talking about how the disciples behaved, uh, praising God and having the goodwill of all people. Can you imagine having the goodwill of all people? No. Even though they weren't necessarily all converted, they had the goodwill of all people. Everyone looked upon them. They had such integrity and joy. They had so much love for one another. They were so united in their community that everyone had goodwill toward them. Isn't that cool? I think it all goes back to identity again. Tell like me if more. we know who we are in the yeah. Lord, we don't have to think badly about other people. We just have our own relationship with the Lord. We have our own connection with the God of the universe. Like yeah. all the other BS is like so pointless when you have Jesus, when you have the savior. Yeah. So you're saying of the disciples, they have to be so deeply rooted in their yeah. identity that they're united with one another and loving one another, despite their own little insular differences, totally. that even other people notice that. Yeah. Yeah. Everything goes back to identity around here. <sighs> I know. Around here. <laughs> Verse 22 through 24 is from Abby. This is, is this the first time someone has just laid out the gospel that way? Preach it, Peter. Abby, were you thinking about the charisma? Were you thinking about Father Parks' talk on that? Yeah, it's so good. I, I was thinking, about that the whole time I was reading chapter two, can I concisely and um, effectively, passionately sum up the gospel message and share it with somebody who doesn't believe or who doesn't know? Can I do that? And I was thinking a lot this morning, I read this, I read something online yesterday about how um, this generation, I think Generation Z, is the first post-Christian generation. And I felt kind of despair about that what honestly. does that mean i think it means like they've been exposed to the gospel but it's like irrelevant oh okay. somebody smarter than me can please chime in on that what the post-christian world is or a post-christian or generation but then i was thinking this is a po a pre-christian generation yeah it's a, it's the same disadvantage and the different or the um the answer is the same in either scenario, the answer is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's what, that's what I was seeing in this chapter two. These people who might have heard about Jesus um, and rejected him on earth, what, what made the difference, what caused 3,000 people to be baptized was the Holy Spirit alive and active in Peter. Yeah. Anyway. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Um... Anchored and rooted in community, and surely they got on each other's nerves at times. Holy Spirit, help. I think about that all the time. <laughs> oh, Lord. Everyone wants the Holy think, Spirit help. Don't you just think that they were so in it with the Lord? Haven't you ever had that experience? Like, you're so in it with the Lord that, like, that other stuff just doesn't matter? Yes. Because you're just so happy with the Lord. I've had an experience of, like that. Like, a, um, literally, like a little utopian experience of that was when I did um, Life Teen Summer Camps. And I worked with this, um, like, team of other summer missionaries. And we were so rooted in prayer. Yeah. 
we were so joyful. We like played together all the time. Yeah. Messy games and mud pits and skits, you know, youth ministry stuff circa 10 years ago. Um, but we would not have all naturally been friends. It was Jesus who united us and it, nothing else mattered. You know, those like little preferences and annoyances didn't matter. We didn't, we didn't, we might've noticed them, but we didn't uh, meditate on them. Totally. We didn't like heart, we didn't feed like resentment or grievances. We were on a mission together to like share the gospel with teenagers. Yeah. The Holy Spirit are the glasses we're wearing when we see Christ in one another. Yes. We got to put on our Holy Spirit glasses. Mm-hmm. Um, identity is who God wants us to be, not our ethnicity or nationality. Wow. Um, yeah, identity is son or daughter. Like, period. That's our, our deepest identity. The foundational truth of our lives. 2,000 odd, 2,000 plus years later and we're still witnessing to others, still doing the work the apostles started. Wow. Verse 17. That's cool. Verse 17. I think it's so cool that Peter quotes so much of scripture in this to just yeah. like continue to invite, prove, argue his way into showing them that Jesus was the Messiah. Because mm-hmm. ultimately that was his goal. That was his gospel message is saying the Messiah came, the Messiah was Jesus. And now like our lives are completely different because he now has come. We're yeah. no longer waiting for the Messiah to come. He came. And I don't know. It's just such a compelling message to say mm-hmm. like these, these prophecies were fulfilled. It's now the time, you know, I love that Peter said verse 29, fellow mm-hmm. Israelites, I may say to you confidently yeah. of our ancestor, David, like how confident totally. am I when I'm sharing the gospel with someone? Yeah. I can be that confident through the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but also because it's true, because it happened, I want to be that confident. Um, haven't you had those moments where the veil is lifted and for that moment you truly see? I long for more of those moments. Post-Christian. We get those every single time we go to the Blessed Sacrament. The veil is lifted and we get to truly see Jesus. Like, yeah, in the flesh. Yeah. yeah. It's so cool. A post-Christian era meaning Christianity is no longer the general root of people's ethical worldview. Yes. Thanks, Stacy. Thank you, you are very helpful today. Ethical Putting my glasses worldview. on and teaching me about the post-Christian era. This is very helpful. Yes. Thank you, Stacy. Stacy, could you join us next time? <laughs> she is joining us. I mean in person. Yeah, come on over. Um, I think it's awesome how Peter was the one who denied Jesus. And even after that, Jesus loved him so much and forgave him. And sometimes we can't forgive someone for something so minor. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's good. You know what I've been thinking about since yesterday? Tell us. Peter forgiving himself. Yeah. Like Peter receiving the forgiveness of Jesus there on the beach at breakfast. Yeah. And then confidently standing up to speak for all of the disciples. Right with the Holy Spirit about Jesus, whom he betrayed. Yeah. How much self-compassion he would have had to have, how much humility to like continue to be the leader that Jesus called him to be and not say, oh no, Lord, not me. I, you know, I, I really messed it up. I was under pressure and like, now you know what kind of a leader I am. No. Yeah. Can you believe that? What did you read? Oh, from Sheila. I love that we still do this in the Mass. We first read the Old Testament, and then the second reading demonstrates how the Old Testament was fulfilled in Christ. So cool. Yes. So cool. Love that. Wow. We were just having a conversation about this. Is the Mass evangelistic? Yeah. And and through, through that comment, through your reasoning, it really is. We're doing in the Mass what Peter is doing in Acts 2. We're lining up the Scripture to show how Jesus fulfilled it. Yeah. Um, cool. this chapter is such a good reminder of the responsibility that we have to be at the hands and feet of Jesus on earth, to be the hands and feet mm-hmm. of Jesus on earth. Totally. Gotta share the gospel message. Good stuff. Good stuff in Acts chapter two. Just feeling invigorated today. 
Just need a dance, need a yeah. music. I mean, that's how I feel when I read about the Holy Spirit. He it's came very cool. and he changed everything. He changed everything for them. And he's supposed to come and change everything for us too. Yeah. It's exciting. He does come. We just have to like open ourselves up. To that's it. what I'm saying. Totally. Like, he wants to do that. He wants to come in this same power to each of us. We assume everyone has heard the message, but there are so many who are waiting for us to bring yes. Jesus. Yes. You guys, there are people sitting next to us in the pews who don't know about Jesus. Yes. A lot of people. Practicing Catholics who have never had, who've never concisely, heard. compellingly heard the saving message of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that he wants a relationship with them, that he's personal, that he loves them, and that that requires a response. Yeah. That they have to give their lives to Jesus. He can't just be something that we do in addition to all the other commitments that we have. He needs to be at the center. It's the only place he belongs is on the throne at the center of our lives. Yeah. And we have to renew that commitment again and again. But yes, there are people there are people that don't know that he wants to be at the center, that they can have a relationship with him, and that it requires everything. So Father Park says the gospel message in four R's, which I don't remember what they are, but I'm gonna to try to guess them. <laughs> First one is relationship. We are in relationship okay. with God the Father in the garden. We ruptured that relationship. Wow. He said this on the thing. I know. I'm just oh. really impressed. Ru we ruptured that relationship. Jesus came to restore that relationship. He is the Messiah. He is God's son who came to restore our relationship with the father. And now we are called to respond to that restoration. I don't think the fourth one is right. I think that was it, dude. But you guys, that's all. That's the message. Four R's. What? That was amazing. You too yeah. can be... An evangelist yeah. like Peter, you can concisely, compellingly speak, preach the gospel. Yeah. Four R's. Four R's. Let's go through it one more time. Just for the we people We were in, in the relationship. Back. Adam and Eve in relationship with God. We ruptured that relationship. God sent his only son, Jesus, to restore, restore. that relationship. I'm loving these hand motions. And now we're called to respond to the hand motions restoration. Are, the hand motions are helpful. They really make it, right? Like for kinesthetic learners. Wow. That was a big word for me this morning, <laughs> this afternoon, this evening, this night. <laughs> Whenever you're watching. <laughs> that is a big word for right now. Okay. A, cra a priest friend of mine shared that some crazy high percentage of Catholics don't believe in the true presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. Yeah. yeah. It's like there was a Pew study recently. It's something like 80%. Yeah. I love this from Jackie. It's so important for us to go back to the basics of the Christian faith. Yes. You know what? I think it's so cuckoo when we say like, oh, I'm above this. Like, this is too simple for me. Yeah. Jesus was very simple with these folks. Like his message was simple and extremely difficult. So mm -hmm. I think at all times we have to go back to the basics. We have to go back to the simplicity of love and what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. And our witness. Yeah. He, like, say, he says, of all of this, we are witnesses. We're just telling you what we've experienced. Yeah. I derailed you. No, I don't even know where I was going. Sorry. I think I was just talking about who knows what. <laughs> Love the hand motions. Here to help. Here to help. Um, come Holy Spirit is a great prayer. Jesus should be put on this, should be at the center and not put on the shelf. Guys, I'm just feeling very convicted to go through the four R's one more time. <laughs> go ahead, Beth. It takes, I'll what, do the it, motions. what does it take? It takes like five times, 50 times for somebody to remember something. Like I want you to be sick No, I of think it. it's like 400. I think it's 3,000. <laughs> I want you to hear it so many times that it's like there's a new neural pathway in your brain and you're talking to someone I just had I just had this epiphany this week. I've been talking to a friend about the Lord and I realized I don't know if she's ever heard that Jesus wants to be at the center of her life, that he wants everything and he's given her everything. And I don't know that she's ever had the opportunity to respond. And I like cannot wait to to give her that invitation. We were created to be in unbroken relationship with the Father. We ruptured that relationship through sin they were adam and eve were cast out of the garden and we rupture our personal relationship with the lord through our sin 
every day. We continue that yep. pattern. But Jesus came, God made man, came to the earth to restore the relationship by dying on a cross for you, for me, for us. So he restored the relationship and we have to respond by receive. Is it receive? We receive that sacrifice on our behalf. <laughs> We're just going to add more R's. Sorry. Guys. Who knows? Sorry. We receive that sacrifice and we respond with our lives. We receive his life for our life and we give him our life. Five R's. <laughs> I feel awful now. <laughs> we'll ask Father Parks. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Guys, how good is that news? Yeah. Sorry for the microphone. I'm just, I can't even get over yeah. that we are rescued people and that we mm. are saved and yeah. that we are free. Yeah. It's like insane. We're free from captivity, from sin. We're free to live in the Holy Spirit. We're free to have the Holy Spirit. It's like bananas what we get when we get Jesus. Do you know what I've been thinking? The whole life. I've been thinking about, because we're reading Acts, because I love Acts. Yeah. I've been thinking how the apostles, the disciples, were so other. They're like so sold out. <laughs> They're like not even like normal people anymore. And I, I think we can look at that and think, yeah, that's not for me. Like that was kind of their thing. But this book is here to show us that that's how we're supposed to be when we encounter the gospel. That our life is supposed to change that dramatically when we have Jesus. It's, it's not a fun thing we do on Sundays. It's not a nice thing that makes us a nice person or a good person. It's meant to be our whole lives. We're supposed to be so totally other from everyone else walking around on this earth that people think we're insane. People think we're drunk at yeah. 9 a.m. It's supposed to change everything. The gospel, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, God himself coming to earth. It's supposed to change everything. No more like these are our problems and why doesn't God help or why doesn't he heal? It's, it's supposed to change everything. We're supposed to think totally differently, talk totally differently, act totally differently. It changes everything. Yeah. So it's a good gut check, heart check for me. Like has the gospel changed everything for me? And it, it's a continual, when you say totally. it's a continual conversion, it's a continual uh, deepening of graces, but totally. I just want to lay that out for you, that, that encountering Jesus is supposed to change everything. You guys, Ch Chandler, 54, Lord, change me. Literally, every time I receive communion, yes. change me. I love that. Change me, soften me, change me. Like that is my, I am not okay how I am. I want to continue to conform to your heart, Jesus, to your will. Like, mm -hmm. I want my heart to be your heart. Change me. Every time. It never ends. We never get to the point and we're like there. It's like we continue to become love because Jesus yeah. is love. Our hearts continue to soften every single day if we allow him to. Yeah. I think we can have a really consumerist mindset about faith and church like what does this do for me how does this affect my life but we aren't just supposed to reap the benefits of the gospel we're supposed to be transformed yeah i was reading this morning romans 12 2 be transformed by the renewing of your minds which means it's a process a deepening of these graces that we read in scripture every time we receive communion yeah every time we talk about the lord every time we encounter him in other people in the word in the sacraments we're supposed to be, I love that you said that, transformed. Our yeah. hearts, our will is supposed to become aligned with his. Not him doing what we ask. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be aligning with him. Totally. It's crazy. It's bananas. Wow. We get Jesus. Yeah, yeah I think someone said like they get nervous about sharing the gospel because it seems like they're being pushy or something. Mm -hmm. This is like a great privilege. It is a great privilege to know the gospel message and to know that we are loved and we're restored and meant to be with the Father. I think we're also, we're in a weird culture right now that thinks like you do you, yeah. like that's true for you. Uh, but this is, this is universal truth and we are in a privileged place totally. to have the universal truth of Jesus, of eternal life, the universal truth of hope. Yeah. 
we, we can, we have to be willing. We have to be willing to be uncomfortable and to tell people about that because their soul is ultimately on the line. Yeah. And I don't mean that as like a doom and gloom. I mean, it's the difference between life and death if people don't hear the gospel. And it comes back to me, it comes back for me to being witnesses. Like I can't share this if I haven't experienced it. It does feel pushy. Yeah, if if that's it's true. not yours, if it's like, I'm supposed to do this. But if you've been deeply changed and affected, yeah. If you're experiencing abundant life, John 10, 10 life, you can't help but share that. You're just sharing yourself at this point. Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. Um, also, can I just tell you one more thing? It is, it's, it's going to be hard. It's going to be awkward, but I think it gets easier. I, th I think it gets easier the more you do it. Father Parks is doing it. He, he does it every single day. He's cool. Every time I talk to him, he's, he's telling me about a barista that he's telling the gospel to, uh, his server at every restaurant. He's like asking them these questions about philosophy and purpose. And he is smart, but above all, he loves the Lord. He, he loves the Lord and he wants other people to know freedom. He wants them to have hope. He wants them to know the truth about who they are. And that drives him. It's his, it's his uh, uppermost value in his life is sharing the good news with people. It's Guys. obviously very inspiring to us <laughs> to be around, you know? <laughs> yeah. Remember the five R's? Four. Mm -hmm. I think it was just four. four. We'll ask Father Parks and we'll put it on stories. Okay. He okay. won't answer until tomorrow or something. True. I texted <laughs> him this morning. He hasn't texted me back. Uh, all right. We love you. Thanks Can't, for being with us. Cannot wait. Chapter three is mm -hmm. tomorrow. Yeah. And then we get a little catch up over the weekend. Yes. And we'll come back with chapter four on Monday. But tomorrow, chapter three, same time, same place. We'll try to keep it to 30 minutes. Um, sorry we went a little longer today. Um, we love you. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.